Hello again everyone, Age of Dune here, and we're back with another League of Legends shoutcast. Gonna be casting a game with Fabi in it this game. He actually got banned out, he didn't get Draven or Vayne, which did not actually make him very happy. He was very concerned. It looks like he also has Bjergsen on his team. We almost got to see a Twitch Tarek lane here. Mongol Warrior almost went with Tarek. But then at the last second, he decided to switch over to Soraka instead, which... Given my experiences, is not going to be fun. Fabi was on Skype or something with some uh, some other people, and he's like, uh, "So how's my lane going to be as Twitch against Lucian?" They're like, "Yeah, you lost, dude." <laughs> so we'll have to see how it ends up going. They actually they said it was actually going to go pretty well when he thought it was Twitch Tarek, which is kind of cool to me because you know that's the lane I used to love so very much, and then now that it's Twitch Soraka. I'm honestly not all that certain. We'll see, though. I mean, Soraka's got really good heals. Problem, of course, is that by doing so, she does sacrifice her life. So, honestly, I'm predicting a very unpleasant lane bot lane. But we'll see. We'll see. So, up in the top lane for the blue team, we've got Zoro Tonso. What does he in? I have no idea. Playing as Azir. He's going to be against the Jace here, played by Darshan. A bit of damage coming out of there. Nothing too big, though. In the mid lane, we've got Entranced playing Victor against probably Bjergsen. Almost 100% certain that it is Bjergsen. I mean, it says I am Bjerg, but, you know, people like to go off and make up other names. But I'm almost certain that that is one of his alts, so... Just go with 99.99% .99 certain that is Bjergsen. All right, down the bot lane, we've got Latman playing Lucian. I know I've seen him before against Twitch, played by Fabi. The supports, we've got our Matt Life playing Janna versus Mongol Warrior playing the Soraka. And then finally, we've got Lee Sin played by Grigny versus Will XO, who I know I've seen before as well, playing the Shaco. I haven't seen Shaco recently very much. And honestly, every time I do, I'm not really all that impressed. I'm not that impressed with Shaco as he is right now. He's got really good clear, and you'll see that in just a second. But. I don't know, he, he just seems to be very weak to me. Did that go to... Okay, that actually did go to Shaco. And... They're actually going to clear this for him. So he's not going to get the... The uh, the experience from those little minions. But he did get to red buff before that was even dead. So he actually got there with the blue buff. And they had a ward there. So they know that he was there. They know he got the blue, and they know he's getting the red now. And there's the ping there from the blue team saying, hey, watch out, he's probably coming for a gig. And that's actually a really good guess, just based on what they do know. So, nice read there by them, <clears throat> keeping an eye on that. It's something that I know I would pretty much never do, but <clears throat> it's definitely good for them. Kind of looks like, oh, he's coming in for a gank on Victor here. And, yeah, he goes straight for it. Gets a decent amount of damage there and some damage from that red buff. Not going to be too bad, but it is actually going to tilt the lane into Fizz's favor just a little bit here. We'll see if Fizz can go ahead and come up. And in goes another gank here from Shaco. And that, that may be a dead victor. Oh, he just, a lot of damage. And, no, he's actually fin able to finish off the Shaco. And that's pretty much made this a really, really tough time here for Bjergsen. We've got a gank coming in from Lee Sin, and we've got a double buffed Victor. That's going to be really painful. He can now harass all he wants. He can do pretty much whatever he wants to Fizz, and Bjergsen's not going to be able to do a thing about it. Down in the bot lane, if we look at the CS, yeah, Fabi has definitely been having a tough time. You can already see it here. He has four CS against 13 for Lucian. So I was definitely correct about that one. And it looks like the Lee Sin is kind of just hanging around here. I'm not sure if he's planning on doing anything with that or what. But there goes that really deadly harass coming out onto Bjergsen. And it's just chunking him down. And there's really not much he can do about it. Because you know, he's got double buff. Any trade that Bjergsen tries, he's going to lose. I'm not quite sure what's going on here with the... Lee Sin, I guess, waiting for a gank, but they were able to burst the Victor down before that happened, 
And now Lee Sin's in a little bit of trouble. He's getting low, but he's gonna be able to finish off the Shaco first. He flashes out. Will he escape? No! He goes down there to Bjergsen, and that is a double buff to Bjergsen. He actually had one just before that from that Victor kill, but now he's got a, uh, you know, refreshed one for like two seconds more. <laughs> but that's a double buff. That's a lot of gold that just went there, and that's gonna be really dangerous for him. Lots of damage coming out here from Azir. I'm kind of surprised about that. Got the flash out of Jace as well. Honestly, from what I'd been told, Azir kind of sucks. So I'm kind of surprised to see him doing this well in this particular game. And I don't know. We'll have to see how this ends up happening. All of a sudden, I kind of wonder if it might be a good idea to go Crystalline Flask on Raka. I could actually see that being something that would be a good thing to do. I'll have to try that sometime. She didn't do it, but she has the, you know, the, the sustain issues. I think that would help a lot. No, it's something to think about. Something to think about. She's getting those cues in on Lucian, though. That one, anyway. And she is actually able to go ahead and sustain off of that somewhat. In comes Shaco. He's stealth up, of course. Goes in, lands the slow there onto Janna. But these guys were not able to get there in time. Out comes that slow from Twitch, and he's going for that... Lucian and actually chunked him down really low there. Lucian just about died and that's gonna give the bot lane for the red team a little bit of free farm here as he's gonna be forced to go back. If he stuck around he would die because the Shaco was still here and he was ready. He was all set to go in if they pushed out at all and that would have been their death. Yerkson just getting a little bit of a little bit of pressure here keeping him a little worried in comes the shake as well out comes the fish it lands on lee sin lee sin gets popped up not gonna be able to finish anybody he goes in he actually will be able to finish somebody down goes the victor again now lee sin's going for that shako shako actually should be able to get out of this and that's gonna be another kill for bjergsen though definitely not worth it uh, especially considering by doing so 100 percent lee sin just reset his gold count so that is three kills now on fizz that is going to be painful. Bjergsen is having a great game this time. Even after that instance, that early instance of Shaco ganking and giving double buff to his enemy, things are 100% in his favor now. Up here in the top lane, more damage coming out here from Azir onto Jace. If we look at the CS totals, Azir is actually somewhat behind. He was able to force the Jace out a little while ago, but all that really did for him was enabled him to go ahead and try catching up on farm as he was actually behind and now he's missing out on a decent amount of farm again but he actually did a lot of damage there to the jace so i'm not altogether certain who will end up coming on this one ahead or behind either way he's only five cs behind lee sin's coming in for a gank and this could be just what the jace needs he doesn't know i believe and I don't know, he's playing really cautious like he might have guessed. No, in there go, in goes the Azir, ults him away, and the, the Lee Sin was actually able to secure that kill. So that was a pretty good gank there. I don't know that Azir actually needed it, because from the damage I saw coming out from him there, he actually might have been able to finish off the Jace by himself. However, having that assist there actually was a pretty good deal as well. Oh, in goes Bjergsen again. Doing a lot of damage to the Victor, not managing to go ahead and finish him off, thanks to that flash. And now he goes back in, gets ignited, and he ends up going down to Victor, actually, thanks to that shield from Lee Sin. Victor ends up surviving pretty easily. So that's definitely going to be pretty bad news for them. Looks like Shaco's going ahead and grabbing his blue buff. Not going to be giving that to, one, to Bjerg quite yet. Instead, it looks like he's going to go ahead and grab some farm here, which I can't say I blame him. Jace is up here farming away. He's actually slightly behind on CS now, thanks to that gank from Lee Sin. It allowed that Azir to go ahead and catch up some. He's now about 14 CS up, which is pretty noticeable considering just a little while ago he was behind. Damage coming out here from Fabi again. They are level 5, but not able to secure anything. One more level and we may see a bit of a fight. If we look at the actual experience... I think the Lucian will hit level 6 before them. We've got a gank coming in here on the jungle, counter jungling that Lee Sin. Lee Sin's getting really low. I don't know. I don't think he's going to go down to this. Uh... Oh, just kidding. Right. He's on the completely wrong side of the map. Of course he's going to go down to that. Huh. 
Wow. Way to be observant, so. Anyway, so down here in the bot lane, they did hit six. Both teams hit six there. Out comes that ultimate there from Twitch. Out comes the culling there from the Lucian as well. And now he is getting chunked. Twitch is doing what he can with his Ratatat Tat. Not quite going to be able to finish him out. Oh, the flash from Raka. Down goes the Lucian to Fabi. And that's going to tilt the lane into their favor. And, of course, the Soraka is just able to go ahead and sustain this up to keep him alive. This is actually not going quite as poorly as I thought. J the Shaco's coming in here for a gank on Azir. And Azir's able to uh, go ahead and jump out of it. But he took about half of his health and damage beforehand. Out comes that harass from Jace. Did not end up landing, I believe. But still did a decent amount. By the way, in the next patch... In the newest patch, anyway. Azir did actually get a lot of bug fixes. Which is really great news. Because that, that's something that a lot of people have been saying he really needs. Bjergsen getting that blue buff there. He, he's had a lot of problems. Not the least of which is actually against Jace. Oh, man. Oh, man. I didn't even think about that. This is actually something. The uh, the acceleration gate there. It's, it's bugged with Azir. If Azir ults the acceleration gate from Jace... He actually gets about 17 CS. So I kind of wonder if that might have played a part in this. That's actually something that was discovered earlier today, I believe. A couple days ago for you guys. But Riot's already fixed it. They already knew exactly what the problem was. Amusingly, the stereotypical... Oh, they code everything as minions. That's, that's actually what it was in this case. Jace's acceleration gate actually was coded as minions. Because when they originally came out with it, they didn't have a way to code it like they do with the wind wall for for Yasuo. They didn't have that back then. Oh, we've got a gank coming in here in Lucian. I will continue that thought in a second. But a lot of damage. There's the slow from Raka. The ultimate from Janda trying to secure this. But Will is probably going to be able to finish this off. He does. He's now turret diving here. His tower is on to the Soraka. Out comes the flash from Janna. She should get out of this. She does, yes. But in the meantime, Bjergsen's up here wanting to gank this Azir. Azir's playing it very safe. But Bjergsen does have a lot of damage. Oh, in he goes and goes ahead and jumps right on out of that. Knew he was not going to be able to survive that at all. And a lot more going on here. It looks like the Lee Sin trying to go ahead and get something. In comes Fabi, though. Out comes the Soraka ultimate, keeping him alive. And yeah, they're actually all going to get out of this. The Q from Lee Sin lands there onto Fabi, and he follows it through. There's three people here. I don't know that that's really in his best interest, but now Raka's gonna go down, and he's actually going for the other two as well. Might be able to finish off the Shaco here. He does, and Fabi's gonna go down as well, and that ended up turning things way around there. Definitely say that the red team kind of overstayed their welcome a little bit in that enemy jungle. But... Yeah, the, the, the Jace thing, they actually did code it as minions because, like I said, at the time, they, they didn't have the technology to go ahead and detect spells. So they actually did it as an invisible line of minions, and whenever it hits that, then it goes faster. Because of that, they actually had to make it so that it's not invulnerable, because if it's invulnerable, it wouldn't count as a hit. So, the problem is that they missed that when they coded up Azir. And they made it so his ult actually does hit those minions, which then gives him about 17 minions worth of CS and XP. They ended up finding this out, and I believe Bjergsen actually figured out in his stream because the guy suddenly went from, I believe it was like level 7 up to level 8, just with just by getting rid of that acceleration gate, which is kind of crazy. And we do actually see a difference of one level here. It may or may not have something to do with it. I'm really not sure. Either way, that is going to be fixed, and by now it actually is fixed. But in, in the game I am casting, it is not yet. That'll actually, I believe it releases tomorrow. So that may actually be a part of this game. I don't know. Shaco coming in here for a gank onto that victory again. Actually gets chunked about half of his health. But Soraka's here. Goes in and lands her heal as well. Fabi's coming in and they're probably going to go for this tower. That would definitely be my guess. It looks like my guess might be wrong though. 
They're not really doing much. Not, uh, not going for it at all. Rocka landing a Q's there. That's actually really hard to do, I've found. A lot of people are very good at dodging those Q's. If they dodge those Q's, you get no heals. It sucks. It's terrible. Fabi going back in, though. Lands that stealth. Stealth's up. Out comes the Ratatat tap. And it was actually eaten entirely by Janna's shield. These guys are forced to immediately back off. Out comes the Calling, doing lots of damage there to Raka, who cannot heal herself up except for landing those Qs. And honestly, right now, if she gets in range to land those Qs, she's probably dead. So you do see her back off. She actually got healed up or something. I don't know. No, she's not. I crossed over. In comes the Lee Sin, lands the Q. Gonna follow it through there. And out comes that Raka ultimate, though. Lee Sin is now dead. The ultimate from... Fizz comes out, Lee Sin's not actually quite dead. He got really close. Oh, just kidding. Jace secures that kill. Nicely done, Jace. Yeah, he got really close there, but I believe the Janna shield actually saved him from actual death. Unfortunately, Jace came around as well, and that was the end of Lee Sin. Looks like Jace is wanting to go here on Azir as well. Honestly, I'm not sure that's really in his best interest. We've seen a lot of battles here between these two, and it's really never gone in Jace's favor, especially since Lucian's here. But even without the Lucian, honestly, I think he would have come out behind. He's now trying his best to run away. He uses that acceleration gate. Bjergsen is here, but he does not have ult. So if they engage this, they're going to get hit pretty hard. Fabi going in now onto Victor. Victor not able to do too much. In goes Bjergsen as well. Out comes the Lee Sin though. Fabi forced to go ahead and flash out. And this is a team fight. Out comes that ultimate there from Azir shunting Fabi back. Fabi ends up going down there to Lee Sin. And the red team is now on the run. Shaco comes in. And that's the fake Shaco guys. Oh, Lee Sin follows it through. Just about dies to it. And now, now Shaco says, now you die. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. Lee Sin actually took pretty much no damage there from Shaco. It was kind of surprising. In the meantime, though, he actually did keep him occupied, so he did not go participate in that fight. Nobody else died. Shaco got really close. Lee Sin got a little close. But now, Gabe been coming on here. Jace is actually still alive, and Rock is doing her best to heal him up. But that leaves her in a very dangerous position. Bjergsen going in on Azir. Azir goes down! And Rocka goes down to Azir, actually. That's the exactly what I was talking about, that really dangerous position. And now Jace finished off the Victor, but Victor was able to get Jace, and then Lee Sin was able to mop up the Fizz. Fabi's hanging around, but he's not going to be able to go in on this. Not with two people there. He gets a ton of farm, though, so that's good. He's still way the heck behind Lucian, though. Way behind. Was that Hurricane? No. For some reason... Oh, that was his... Uh, that was his... Expunge. Not Expunge. Contaminate. That was Contaminate. Alright, these guys are going for the dragon. They're going to be able to get that with no problem whatsoever. No fights at all about it. There's a ping there from the red team saying, hey, go check this out, but it's already gone. Shaco's going to come over. Not going to be able to do too much. Again, I'm I'm just not really all that thrilled with Shaco. I, anytime I see him right now, he's just, he's always underwhelming. Even in the times that he does pretty well early game, he still ends up just really disappointingly late. That is long. Fabi goes ahead and sneaks up there, gets some damage in onto that Azir. Not gonna be able to do much about it though. He didn't ult though, so he did some damage and then got out, so that's definitely worth it. And Shiko goes in with his stealth, get popped in there by the Janna though. I believe she picked him up with that pink ward, so she knew. And he's forced to go ahead and back off again. Just completely shut down there. Out comes the Twitch ulti there, and the Janus Shield completely negates most of it. In the meantime, Jace is getting the tower up there, but honestly, not much was... There, there really wasn't much of a result from that there, from the Fabi ult. But it did actually force them a little bit back, and it actually will allow them to go ahead and grab this tower. Lots of damage coming in here onto Shaco as well. Janna just about dead, but not quite. Fake Shaco getting hit up in the stun there. But that's perfectly acceptable. Tower for fake Shaco? <laughs> yeah, definitely worth it. Oh, the Q misses. Oh, in goes the Yerkson there. Gets the stun onto Victor and ends up securing that kill. Shaco hanging out in this bush. Out comes the Q from Lee Sin going in, but he gets hit by the Shaco. He's 
actually didn't take too much damage, but with these two here, if he decides to go for this, he's not in a good position. Not in a good position at all. Rock is there, though. She heals up. He kicks Beardson over the wall. Out comes that ultimate there from Rock, but Beardson still goes down. And Izir comes in to help out as well. Bjergsen thought he'd be able to go ahead and clean this up, but unfortunately for him, there's a few too many there. And Lucian was able to go ahead and secure that kill. So not bad there at all for the blue team, baiting Bjergsen into that. And in the meantime, their bot lane is pressing pretty hard here. Fabi's going to miss a couple of the CS, but he'll be able to get here in time to clean it up. And of course, they're not going to lose their tower anytime soon for that one, as it is well above half health. Only way they might is if, of course, the blue team decides to push it. Which, possibility, but I find pretty unlikely at the moment. For now, they're more than happy to just go ahead and farm their other lanes, as the red team was actually pushing as well. Honestly, I really like the idea of Azir. I really do. He's a pretty cool champion. I considered picking him up, and I probably will once he's not bugged. Until then, not so much. Pink wards coming out here from both teams. Getting cleared up. And the blue buff is going to Bjergsen. This is great news. Yeah, the uh, the Galactic Azir skin as well. I really, I really liked that. And I really had to fight myself on whether or not I should go ahead and buy the bundle there. I ended up deciding against it simply because League Client did not show my past RP purchases. I wanted to see how long it had been and to see if, you know... I was really okay with spending it that often, and then I realized that, oh, I can't even see how often. So I just said, forget it, I'm not buying anything. It's kind of funny. Works for me. I don't have to spend money. All right, so in the meantime, the blue team here is actually pressing this mid lane. They're getting a decent amount of damage on the tower there. In they go. In the red team goes. Fake Shango goes down. Fabi taking a ton of damage there from that ultimate, but he does get healed up by Raka. So that's perfectly acceptable for him. Jace is shoving this top lane, and he's trying to go ahead and grab that tower as he knows his team is keeping them occupied down here. Raka taking a lot of damage just from her heals there, and she's going to be forced to uh, possibly die. Lee Sin kicks her out. Her ult just barely saved her. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. Red buff, I believe, is what that was. And she ends up going down. And then Fabi went down as well. They got the tower. Jay's got that top tower, sure. But they just traded a mid tower for it, and they may be getting the in hip tower. Actually, Jace did not get that tower. Jace did not get that tower yet. All right, but down goes that in hip tower. Really, there's not much these guys can do. They're forced to go ahead and back off. They, they can't defend the in hip. But Jace is doing his best to go ahead and take the enemy in hip tower. Which would actually make this to be at least decent trade. It's not the best trade, but honestly, I, I'd say they're, they're a whole lot more okay with this than they would be the other way. Bjergsen taking a lot of damage there from Victory. He's got to watch out. Teleport coming in from Azir, trying to go for the Jace. Jace is dead. Azir got that with no problem whatsoever. Those home guard boots got him right where he wanted to be, and he was able to take Jace down immediately. There's the Baron pings. Doesn't really look like the blue team's really going to go for that. But they thought about it from the looks of it. It is warded by the red team, though not for much longer. Although Soraka might be on her way over to ward it up. No, she did not. Kind of surprising there. The, the blue team technically could successfully get there and go for that. The only wards from the red team right now are here. But there we go. Out comes that Soraka ward. Okay. So that's, that's what I was worried about there. Like, Why is she not warding that? Lee Sin also warded it up. So both teams do have vision of that. Dragon's coming up right now. Okay, well, it, 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 it's back up right after the screen shifted away thanks to the automatic shifting there. And the blue team's already on their way down. Will XO's there as well. He's getting baited in here. Out comes his ultimate, and all of a sudden he realizes, oh, there's a victor, but in comes Raka and Twitch. Fake Willix is about to die, but honestly, that's definitely okay. In comes the Lucian. Here comes pretty much all the teams. Out goes that Zonya's Hourglass, and he's forced to flash out, but he goes down to Yurton anyway. The Soraka ulti comes out, and Zir's trying to disengage here and actually trying to get some damage on Bjerg there. The sneaky mode from Fabi getting him to range. He's going to be able to take down the Lucian, maybe? No, he's not. One more shot would have done it. The ultimate there comes out from Bjerg. Not going to be enough, though. Oh, so close. Had that hit on Lucian, it actually probably 
Fabi's wanting to go for something. He wants something here, but they're not being able to get it. Azir goes ahead, jumps to his little guys. He's able to get out of this. Blue Red team might be able to go for the dragon here. But honestly, if they try, they're in a really dangerous position. They're all really low. These guys are pretty low, too. But I, I don't know. In goes to Lee Sin. Lee Sin secures that dragon. It does not go to the red team because Shaco was not even close. And now he goes down. But they do manage to go ahead and secure Fabi. So it ends up being a one-for-one one with Dragon, and these guys are continuing to chase here. Soraka's pretty much dead. She goes down. Bjergsen and Jace are both really low. Lucian jumps over the wall. He wants to go for this. Bjergsen's probably dead. They do manage to go ahead and secure the kill there onto Azir and actually the Janna as well, I guess. But he still ends up going down. Bjergsen's still alive. Tower shots going out on Matt and Latman. In comes Jace from behind, and that is a killing spree there for Jace. Nicely done there by him, and they end up cleaning that up. Kind of, you kind of chased a little bit too far there, and then these super minions are here knocking on their doors. So they're forced to go ahead and defend this, but Fabi just came back up, so he's perfectly fine with that. Taking a lot of damage from the super minions, but he's got a Soraka support to keep him alive. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. Oh, man. Victor versus Jace. In comes Rocket as well. Out comes the exhaust. But Victor's able to use that ultimate to go ahead and finish him off. Out comes the Fizz ulti. The Zanyas gets rid of that though. And Bjergsen's having a pretty tough time. He's got fairly limited damage right now. But his cooldowns will be up soon. There we go. Goes in. The Janna shield helps him. But it's not enough. And she ends up going down as well. Thanks to the fact that Fabi came in to help out. And nicely done there. Shake man, you're uh, in a pretty bad position there. Ends up going down. In the meantime, Bjergsen went ahead and grabbed that blue, but blue team headed right for Baron as soon as they saw the Shaco died, which is a really good idea on their part. And the red team has no wards around here to go for it. Oh, Fabi. Fabi wants this. I don't think they have a pink ward, so they're not going to see him. He knows this is happening. He actually went ahead and revealed himself, though. Out comes the calling. He's getting really low. If Lee Sin lands a Q, misses the Q. Fabi might actually be able to live this. And he went, goes ahead and uses up his Blade of the Ruin King just to make sure of it. I, I did not expect him to escape that. I 100% expected him to die. Had Lee Sin landed his Q, Fabi would now be dead. But he did actually end up missing it. It's nicely done there. Getting the heal from Raka. And she, of course, gets the heal on herself from the Q. In the meantime, Bjergsen is down bottom pressing that tower. Again, not going to be able to defend this in him. They've got the double towers, though, and they're probably going to fight there. Slow comes out under Raka. She's going to be fine, though. And they are indeed pressing forward. I don't know that they can actually take this with them here. In goes the Lee Sin trying to take down the Fabi. Kicks the Soraka away. This tower is actually going down. Bjergsen's on his way back. Will he get here in time? I have no idea. Jaina, Jana's getting really low. That Jaina. Bjergsen does come in. Out comes the shark onto the Azir. He gets popped up, but he really didn't matter all that much. Fabi goes down to Azir. He's going to be able to finish off the Victor, actually. is The Soraka as well. No, she's actually surviving for now. Bjergsen comes in. Out comes that Zonyas, but Lee's, uh, Lucian goes down. Lucian's really low. The Shaco was able to secure the kill there. Down goes the Lee Sin to Jace. And now the red team has the blue team on the run. They are continuing to shove this forward. That was interesting. And there we go. Down goes Janna as well. The only one left now is this Azir. He could probably take Bjerg as he is right now. In goes Bjerg. Oh! Down goes the Azir to Jace, actually. So that ends up being an ace. And that's going to give the red team the free roam here. The blue team actually had Baron there. Honestly, I, I think it's just that they pressed too hard. They came for this in the, the, the tower, and they fought under double towers. That really, in my opinion, is what did them in there. They took a lot of extra damage from those towers, and it ended up just <clears throat> throwing them that battle. I, I by no means think it's over. The red, blue team still has a 6k gold lead on the red team. So, they're doing pretty well here. Oh, Bjergsen, watch out. He's gonna go down. He had just used the Trickster. 
That was really unfortunate there on his part. He'd used the trickster to go ahead and farm those up. Unfortunately, Lucian was watching here, so saw him head this way. Figured he'd be at Golems. Used the blue trinket. Indeed, Bjergsen was there, so he said, hey, you die now. And he did actually secure that kill. Didn't need to use Flash or anything because he is Lucian and just dashed over the wall. On the plus side, though, for the red team, yeah, Bjergsen died, but no waves were anywhere close to the red team's towers because of that earlier ace. So they're not actually going to be able to get too much off of this. They may be able to get this tower because the waves are getting there just now in the red team. Yeah, they're not even going to try to defend this. But by the time they get to the inhib tower, Bjergsen's going to be back up. Well, that's interesting. Oh, because it was the Azir turret that died. Out comes the calling. Not really doing too much. It takes about half of Willex's health, but of course there's Soraka there. In goes Willexo, does a decent amount of, actually a lot of damage there to the uh, Victor, but unfortunately his entire team is dying. Down goes Fabi. The Victor does end up going down, but he got a triple kill beforehand. Bjergsen's doing his best out here. Azir is trying to fight him off. Lucian's hanging around. Out comes the Trickster. There we go. Bjergsen does secure that kill. Now he's... Oh, nice dodge of that Q. He's still in trouble, though. Trickster should come up soon, I believe. Mm, there it is. He goes for Lucian. Dodges the Q. He is still alive, trying to escape from this Lee Sin. Q will come out soon from Lee Sin, and it hits. Nice Soraka heal. Soraka came up just in time to ult there, and nice dodge. We may may see Bjergsen go ahead and secure the kill onto Lee Sin here. No? What? Oh! That was strange. Lee Sin still died. I, I don't know exactly why Bjergsen specifically got hit there. I guess he was baiting him. He thought that Rocket would be able to heal him. Unfortunately, he went up into Troll Pole, which, you know, he still got healed when he came back down, honestly, so that doesn't really matter. But, I don't know, I, I feel like that was kind of a, a bit of a misplay there on his part. I, I think he thought he could burst down the Lee Sin a little bit faster than he did, and Bjer the Lee Sin said, no, that's not going to happen. And in the meantime... They lost their second Nexus Tower. They have no Nexus Towers now. Blue team could push up the middle and just finish this game. These guys do have to watch out though. Shaco going for that Victor right now. Out comes the ult, but he goes down nearly instantly to that AoE damage from the Victor ult. In goes the Jace. The Fabi is there as well. Lots of damage going in onto Victor, but he's doing a ton of damage as well. In comes Azir. Jace goes down. Fabi goes down as well. And this may be the game right there. All of the blue team is up, and there's a 40-second timer before Jace and Fabi are up. So that's probably going to be GG. Bjergsen hanging around on the sidelines to possibly try to secure kills on anybody. I can't see it happening. They're not going to be able to defend this. This is, this is going to be the game. These two people alone are not going to be able to do anything against this five-man team. So down goes the him. These guys are actually surprisingly staying fairly... A bit out there, not going for the ta the uh, the Nexus. And out comes the Shaco trying to go for Lucian. Soraka finally goes down. Down goes Shaco again. That's an ace. Fabi's coming up in one second. I think it's going to be too late. That's going to be the game. Down it goes. All right. That's pretty tense. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Bye.